Go to your appropriate sign and let's line up. There, there are really two fantastic um, days in the life of a medical school. <laughs> this is one of them, when we welcome a new class. And equally uh, fun is match day when we say goodbye to the class. And you, that'll be a special day for you guys. For the parents, uh, this is a really great day to be uh, proud of your child, uh, but you're going to really enjoy match day because not only will it be emblematic of their completing their journey, but they'll be off the payroll. <laughs> so good luck. We'll see you in four years. You'll be really happy about that. <laughs> but it is really such a personal honor for me to be here uh, with you tonight. I've been at Baylor now for three years, uh, but I remember entering the profession of medicine many, many years ago. And I understand the profound significance of this event, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you officially as you officially enter the field of medicine. You know, this is a really important event. The white coat is a symbol that reflects the professional standards as outlined in the oath of Hippocrates that we all take as physicians. The oath and the white coat remind us of the timeless and universal truth about being a physician that caring for fellow human beings is a powerful privilege that carries with it an obligation to abide by the highest professional standards. As Baylor medical students and eventually Baylor graduates, and because of your exceptional talents and education, I really challenge you to strive for the highest professional standards. So my simple message to you tonight is that if you embrace this profession with all its possibilities and live up to its expectations, that in the words of Hippocrates, happiness and good repute will be yours forever, and the world will be a better place because of you. It's appropriate tonight that we present the Ben and Margaret Love Foundation Bobby Alford Award for Academic Clinical Professionalism. This award recognizes a Baylor College of Medicine physician for professionalism and humanism, and the ability to role model these qualities in the practice of medicine. The 2013 recipient of the Love Award is one of the finest examples of professionalism that you or I will ever encounter. Dr. Martha Mims is Chief of the Hematology and Oncology Section in the Department of Medicine and is Director of the Clinical Trial Support Unit in the Dan Duncan Cancer Center. She's a graduate of Baylor College of Medicine where she also completed her internal medicine residency and fellowship in hematology and oncology and a postdoctoral fellowship as well. She began her career as a research scientist and at the age of 38 entered medical school. She was a scientist who wants to know how research impacts patients. During her clinical training, she developed a tremendous passion for caring for the underserved and she has focused her career on improving inequities in healthcare. She spends 100% of her time 
caring for patients with cancer and blood disorders at the Ben Taub Hospital, where she and her team provide outstanding care that's as good or better than any hospital in the country, and it's a public hospital. When you rotate at Ben Taub, you will learn much more about medicine when you are with uh, uh, Dr. Minns, and you will learn a lot about professionalism. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Martha Mims, the 2013 recipient of the Ben and Margaret Love Foundation Bobby Alfred Award for Academic Clinical <laughs> Professor. Thank you, Dr. Klotman, and thank you, Dr. Todd, for nominating me for this award. Uh, it's truly an honor to receive the Ben and Margaret Love Foundation Award tonight. After reading a little bit more about Mr. and Mrs. Love, I'm even more convinced that I don't really deserve this. Um, as many of you know, but some may not, Ben Love was the president of the Texas Commerce Bank and later CEO of Texas Commerce Bank Shares. With the help of his family, Mr. Love rose from the devastation of the Depression to achieve marvelous things in business and for the community. In, his, in the years that followed, I often heard Dios te bendiga. Sometimes I think it was a simple thank you for a job well done, but other times I think it meant, I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> Those times I rushed home to my books or stepped out long enough to log onto the internet and double check or quickly read up on whatever issue we faced. And I thought about Rush Lynch, who always seemed to know the answer to everything, and he served as a shining light for me. Or Mark, Mark Udden, who had a seeming infinite knowledge of hematology gleaned from years of experience in caring for patients. Sometimes I heard it and I thought about what a blessing my colleagues were sometimes keeping me in line and critiquing what I said or had done and always serving as real examples of what it meant to be a physician. So tonight, as you embark on the journey I am on, I leave you with this phrase and I hope that each time you hear it, you'll be reminded of the nobility of what we do. Dios los bendiga. It's a great privilege to see in its entirety the freshly minted class of 2017. <laughs> and it makes me recall, as I'm sure it does many of the senior statesmen sitting out here, of um, the time when we stood at this threshold, eager and passionate, ready to do something, but not really sure what we had to do. So where do the white coats come from? The white coats start to appear on persons of physicians around the time when science begins to inject itself into medical practice. It comes around the time when technologies permit a detailed understanding of disease mechanisms and rational therapies. It comes along with the confidence that uh, we could actually uncover the causes of the diseases we try to treat and can even cure many of them. Until that time, remember, white coats were the property of laboratory physicians not practic uh, laboratory scientists, not practicing physicians. So perhaps this quickening of the young science impelled physicians to start wearing white coats, almost in conscious imitations of lab scientists. But a scientist laboring at his bench in his white coat would seem very far removed from the immediacy of contact with patients, quite far removed from the art of medicine. And yet that white coat which proclaims you to be a practitioner of the youngest science, also by a very mysterious process, affirms for you the right to be a practitioner of that ancient art of medicine, to touch the sick, to probe the cause of illness, and to administer treatment. I remember the first time that I put on my white coat in public. Um, it was shortly after my white coat ceremony, and I was going to the library at Rice University, my alma mater, to do some studying. <laughs> uh, and as I was getting out of the car, I figured I'd throw on the white coat. Just in case, you know, I ran into someone I knew, I'd look official, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, while I was walking around campus with my shoulders kind of just bouncing a little excessively, kind of like I was an NBA player slash Justin Bieber, <laughs> I, uh, I ran past, or I walked past, me meandered past, a small group of people crowded around 
a, a girl who had just run into headfirst into a pole on accident. And so as I walked by, one gentleman reached out to me and said, with my white coat and my scrubs, like, are you a doctor? Can you help out? And at this point, I'm about as much of a, at this point, I'm about as much of a doctor as Dr. Pepper and Dr. Seuss. And so, and so as the group awaited my response, my heart was beating super, super fast, like, like a teenage boy on his first date. And I was, and I was thinking to myself, okay, this would be a great time to just drop my books and run. <laughs> but every student entering medical school already knows the basic sciences, how to study, how to think critically, and how to work hard. When we don, on our, when we don our white coat, we rededicate our studies to helping individual patients. We begin a process of learning how to take our talents to the bedside of the sick. Today, you're committing to spend the next four years on your own journey to wear the white coat, nurturing your own sense of compassion, transforming yourself into a healer. Trust my word. For me, there is very little that is more endearing than watching my sweet mother lovingly hand wash, air dry, and steam press my white coat. For both her and I, it is a labor of love and a regular reminder of the countless lives that I am touching and the childhood dream that I am slowly but surely achieving. Whatever you do, don't lose that sense of wonder that us upperclassmen can recognize in your eyes. Don't forget who you were as you strive to become the position you aspire to be. Congratulations, class of 2017. You totally deserve it. And now we don the white coats. You may now don your white coats. On your white coats. <laughs> Can I have the students please stand and recite along with me the BCM Medical Student Oath? At Baylor College of Medicine, and as a future physician, I will practice medicine to the highest standards of conduct by doing what is best for my patients and allowing neither greed, nor miserliness, nor, nor thirst for great reputation to corrupt me. I will cultivate the virtues of integrity, honesty, compassion, courage, respect, and self-sacrifice in myself and in my colleagues. I will remember that my actions impact the way the world perceives medicine. I will cherish the diversity of my patients and my colleagues and will not tolerate any form of discrimination or harassment. I will respect those who are wiser than I am and will gratefully follow their guidance. I will be compassionate and never see in the patient anything less than a fellow creature in pain. Today is the first step in a lifetime of learning, and I promise to always challenge the extent of my knowledge. May the white coat I don today remind me of the promises I have made and of my duty to make medicine better. Will you face the audience, please? I present to you Baylor's class of 2017. is so important for our medical students, but it's also really important for the faculty and for practicing physicians because this is just pure enthusiasm, excitement, 
about this career and how wonderful it is. And it's really the antidote for burnout for anyone who's practicing medicine that needs a dose of enthusiasm for the field. We're just so happy to have the class of 2017 here, very proud of them already, and very excited for this uh, year to begin for them. Uh, I'm very excited. Yeah? Uh, it's been a long time coming, a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. And who's here with you so ready? Uh, my parents. Okay. And my brother. How's the white coat fitting? A little big, but it's it's nice. So, are you excited about today? Yes, so, I'm very excited. Okay, okay, so who's here celebrating with you? This is my husband, Zach, my mom, my grandmother, my husband from college. Do they travel from out of town? Or? Yes. Where do they come she from? She flew from Chicago. My mom and grandmother um, came in from Nacogdoches. Okay. Are they so proud? Mom, are you so proud? We are so proud of her. Congratulations. It's exciting Thank night. You. Are you excited? I am. I am. You know, it's definitely, you know, it, it really uh, hits home that, you know, we're beginning this huge journey. It's Who's here with time. you? My whole family is over here. Where are they coming from? From College Station, actually. College so, Station. yeah, not too far. Not too far. Okay. They were luckily able to make it. A couple of my siblings also. How does the white coat feel? It feels good. It feels good. A little big. Yeah. Hopefully I can fill it out either by uh, eating more or working out more. One of the two. But I'll get it there. I'll get it there. It feels good, though. Thank you so much. Uh, brother Carlos. This is my mom, Gina. My dad, Cesar. My girlfriend, Grace. And my other brother, Enrique.